to Big Blend Radio Champagne Sunday show. It is it is Valentine's Day, and um, we're excited because, you know, you just heard two hands, and um, we're trying to get the echo away here. We've got two hands, and uh, that is the very first track on the album, A Romantic Guide to King Crimson. It is by the husband-wife duo, Pat Masolato, you know him as a drummer, and wife Deborah, the singer, and it is out today, so we're going to give a big champagne toast out. Uh, go to their website, patmasolato.com, and I'm going to spell it out again because then I feel like I didn't have too much champagne. It's pat, M-A-S-T-E-L-O-T-T-O, uh, dot com. So welcome, Pat. How are you? I'm pretty good. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. Deborah, how are you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but we are having feedback through the phone there, but I think I know, we'll get there. Wait, uh, okay. Pat, let's start with you on this. Number one, happy yeah. Valentine's Day to you both. And um, Thank you. Just recreating these songs on the album. I love the album because it's just, I don't I don't hear music like this ever, like now. I haven't heard music like this. Like, no, it's different. It's definitely different in, in a good way. 
Excellent. Tell us about why. It's bubbling, yeah. bubbling with enthusiasm from you? Yes, I love it because it's got a little <laughs> bit of all these different genres. It just flows and it's magical and mystical. That's why I keep saying I love that. I love that kind of feel where you can, there's a flow where you just kind of go into another little world. I like going into different worlds. <laughs> it's outer space. Yeah, what what <laughs> led you to do the album? Well, have you ever heard the band King Crimson? Have you ever yes. are you familiar with the band? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And what what have you possibly heard from the band before? I was listening to a lot of the same things. You know, King Crimson, I hear the name a lot because we do a lot of interviews with prog rockers. And so uh-huh. everyone's like, always oh, talking about King Crimson. I'm like, okay, it seems like we're getting there on the sound. Um, but the, the uh, King Crimson, everyone's talking about you guys, and I'm going, I didn't even know what prog rock was until, until we started doing all these interviews. And so then I had to start looking you up. And then here it is. A lot of the songs are on this album that I've listened to. And there's one I yeah. can't pronounce. It's, it's your second really? one on there. I can't. Well, I don't. I give oh, everything Monte an opportunity. Kudasai. That is called Monte That's Kudasai. It. That's a Japanese title. It means I wait for you. Mm-hmm. That's what that means. Ooh. And if you're if you're familiar with Crimson, then you know it's a 25 year history. We're kind of the excuse me, 25 yeah. years. That's how long I've been in the band. The band yeah. has been together for 50 years, and wow. obviously influenced everyone from Tool to Nirvana. Cites mm-hmm. Crimson as an influence. So yeah. you've sort of heard a diluted version of Crimson through many, many other acts, even if you've never heard King Crimson. But mm-hmm. King Crimson's music is often thought of as being. Uh, pretty aggressive and uh, mm-hmm. polyrhythmic. It and is. and be, because of those things, like most heavy metal and prog music, it, it, it leans towards a stronger male audience. So very deliberate on this record. My wife, Deborah, if she can even hear me, I'm not sure. Yep, but, she's there. Uh, she's there. She's there. Oh, good. She's at the other end of the house. We're trying to suit your nope, needs here. You're all good. We're all good. Okay, so uh, she can fill in, but she had observations traveling with the band, which were pretty obvious that uh, not a lot of women in America. We get a lot of women in South America and Eastern Europe, but it's different in America. And uh, as the years passed, we thought about making a record uh, to try to deal with that. (laughs) And that's sort of what we've done. Uh, So my wife, Deborah, she credits me as producer, but really... I'm listening through her. her. Her her goal was for me to keep this record pretty. So I hope we've achieved that. Mm. I, it is. I think That's we have. Saying. Yeah, the flow, Deborah, the flow. And I think it's it's got to do with the the music in there, obviously, but the rhythm, the melody, but your voice kind of brings, I think, brings everything together in that flow. Thank you very much. But I had a really good producer. <laughs> He knew how to mic my voice. He introduced me to really expensive mics, actually. What is the name of that mic, Pat, that you well, made me Deborah sing out of that, that was fabulous? Yeah, Deborah likes the Neumann 87, but you girls are probably more familiar with something like a Shure SM7, mm-hmm. which Deborah also uses here on the record a few places. Oh, cool, cool. So it comes into having the right things and the right tools. When tell us the story about recording this because you've got a lot of different musicians um, that are part of the album and um, I mean it's the pandemic too so tell us about actually getting everyone together to make it happen. Well, because of the internet, we don't need to have them in the same room all the time. Although we have, you know, they yeah. if they've got a home studio, we can send them a file and they can work on it on their end of it and send it back to us and we never have to be face to face. Mm. Yeah, but we started started before COVID. So we did start with musicians together in the room. uh, But then as it carried on throughout the year, people had to send files back and forth. Yeah, that's that's too bad. It's it's amazing how it can happen, though. I mean, it's I think a lot of musicians, um, it goes from, oh, crap, we're not performing to, hey, well, let's create. So a lot of depending on who who you are in the in the music world. A lot of music is being written and created over this time frame, which I think is exciting because as soon as there's mu- new music, I'm like, let's go, let's do this, you know. But um, I agree. I, I think we're going to be really pleasantly surprised when we see how much really beautiful music comes out of the pandemic. Yeah, and then when people get to be able to perform, that's not a Facebook Live. Um, then exactly. you know, to be able to be out, we're going to have like 
wow, new material everywhere. How cool. But everywhere. But it's, it's really fun. Plus, they have time to work on it. You know, a, a busy musician is touring a lot. Most musicians are on the road, you know, more than their home. My husband was anyway. So mm-hmm. that's one of the things that has been joyful about the pandemic that I hate to even talk about. But I've had him home all to myself for almost a year. It's been yeah. magic. I've never had that in our relationship. Oh, that's cool. It's interesting that's cool. to sleep in the same bed every night. <laughs> that's, I, With the see, dog. We, that's, that's weird. It it's is a weird. It's a new treat. I mean, well, that's cool. That's cool that you're. In, I know we don't sleep in a new. But you, you also did some, uh, you know, some of this in um, an RV, right, or a camper? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we bought a Class C, uh, a Coachman, a unique one that has that back door entry, sort of like an ice cream truck. So I could oh, actually cool. put some drums in through the back, and it's kind of a Murphy mm-hmm. bed. But we shot off across from. We live in Texas to see family out in California. You know, we shot across. Uh, uh, the south through Arizona through through uh, Fort cool. Stockton the RV park there and then in Quartztown another RV park and then we went up Fort after Sight. seeing family in LA we uh, we shot up the coast through Santa Barbara and Oroville all the way up to Clear Lake and Weed I've got family up there all the you way into from weed? Portland did you <laughs> roll Absolutely. into weed he rolled into I've weed got the t-shirt. <laughs> that's funny. We went to I, weed. I love, but you said Oracle in that area. Did you go through the Redwoods then, like Oric and um, Gold's Bluff and all of that area? Did you get to see the, the elk out on the beach and stuff? Not on this trip. We didn't but I see that. But my daughter lived in Forestville. So that okay. was one of the places where we parked and really enjoyed it. There's a lovely RV park right in Forestville, and we stayed there mm-hmm. for a couple of days. Cool. Yeah, it was eventful. We had a black water issue there with a broken uh, with a broken handle, <laughs> so we spent an extra day there to deal with so, that. Well, you, you're traveling in this, you know, this motorhome in or camper, whatever you want to call it. We're in a car. We don't do it. We don't do that. The, like, the British mm-hmm. call it a caravan. We'll, we'll yeah, a caravan. Yeah, I'm used caravan. to that. We, when we lived in England, like that's that. what they would call it in South Africa. And when we did the Africa thing, it was the caravan. Right. And but um. What I was going to ask is, like, you're going out there now. You have drums in there, so are these all electric, and or are you like, are, or are you letting the world hear, like, here's the music coming out of, of the caravan? No, we don't travel like an ice cream truck with the music playing. No, I, I just was <laughs> referring to the back door. <laughs> On um, this is a unique option that reminded me of an ice cream truck. No, we're listening to the music and talking about it and reconceptualizing it a lot. Deborah oh, cool. can tell you more, but you know we sit there with the dogs, and, and it makes you it makes you rethink the uh, when you're when you're listening in a studio is very different from listening when you're active. You know when you're hiking or driving a car. You know the music just you, you hear different things. Mm. We I really that- traveled through some gorgeous scenery. Places that neither of us have ever been before, up through Utah and the mountains of Colorado. And um, when you're playing our music while you're driving these long drives, especially if you find yourself driving at night, it feels really magical. You can tell, like, the order and the flow, how songs are supposed to be. We'd get some really great ideas because we're sitting together. We're each other's captive audience when we're camping. Mm -hmm. Like, we got nobody else. It's he and me and our two dogs. And they're both mm. rescues, by the way. I thought you should know that. Oh, mm. that's awesome. Cool. That's awesome. You know, and that's uh, we, with the amount of driving we do. It is because <laughs> I I get I try to find local stations so you can hear local music from that area if you can, and it's that does rare. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's fun. It's hard it's to really find fun. because most of the stations have the same playlist. You'll hear Hotel California oh, no matter God. what. I I mean it. <laughs> no offense. It's enough it's now. Just, I, it's like <laughs> stop it. Like you know, there's there's King Crimson. Excuse me, you've got your album out now too. But add it in. But you know, when you look at that, um, we think road trip music is the hugest thing, and we always try to pair it with the scenery, because Absolutely. like what you're saying, going through and music has to keep you going, where you don't. It's it's like you you know how chewing gum loses its flavor, and so road <laughs> yeah. trip music is not allowed to do that. Otherwise, right. you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you yeah. wanted to keep going. And yeah. so it's very important to us that you have the right music. And your music, What this is what's really cool about this album. Um, 
to me, going in and listening, you've got all these genres in there, but it was it doesn't sound to me like you try to go, we're going to do this genre, we're going to do that, we're going to do this and that. It's, to me, that flow is important, but you have all these little nuances, but it's all dynamically put in a nice little, I don't know, it's like a beautiful tapestry, this album. Thank to me. you. Just, Thank you. We yeah. were hoping to make somewhat of a playlist, like a romantic playlist that you would give your loved one. You know, if you wanted, to, you know, to tell her, remember when we were in high school and guys used to make us playlists? Oh, cool. You know, Give a little mixtape. They'd either put it on a little cassette or a, you know, CD later. And then you, when you listen to it, you'd think about them and they'd try to pick songs that made them think about you. Well, that's kind of the feeling we wanted to get with this record. Mm. It, it sounds like, like the wood tape, Lisa. I know, I know, yeah. I know the wood tape. I, there it is. Don't start. Don't start, Nancy. Well, I'm, I'm going it. to. And I'm glad you let me start with two hands because I think it's like the perfect song that introduces the rest of the songs on the album. And it's a really hard. Like I agree. You wanna, you know, with the album, I want to just sit down. Let's just play the whole thing and talk about each song. But time-wise, there's, there's some songs on there that just, there's Moonchild and, and that song to me, it's just even just the name and then the music, the whole thing is this magical. It adds mystery. It adds, I, I love that song. It's so picking Did it make all these you feel like songs. you were floating? Yes. The whole album like makes floating? me floating. I told okay. Nancy, I'm sorry, but I don't, nobody listened, but I, you know, there's certain things in life where you just want to, mm-hmm. I don't know, inhale something really happy and just everybody <laughs> leaves me alone in my bubble. Okay. <laughs> And that's it. It's, I just I like just everybody leave me alone. It's an album that you're going to listen. You're just listening. Just be free as a balloon, just like a balloon that left the earth. There. Yeah, I like to. That studio like to... is upstairs. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, when we went to work on it, I'd literally be kind of floating upstairs, and he'd have my mic ready, and he'd turn the lights down really low to, so that we could kind of get into that sweet kind of groovy romantic mood. And then when you sing in a situation like that with the man that you love right there, you're kind of singing to him. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> oh, with scotch. Okay, there it is. And Actually, there's scotch, an yeah, additive. A little scotch would help. Oh, okay. There it is. Nancy, what were you going to ask there? I was, I was just going to say I like to just lean, like, lay back, close your eyes, and paint a picture in my mind to the music. Mm-hmm. And then play it again. And you get a whole new picture. Exactly. Mm. It's like every time you play it, if you actually just relax and, and think about the music or just let it be there, you can paint a new picture in your mind. That's what I like to do to music like mm-hmm. that. Perf- that's a perfect you've, way to listen to it. And you've given us a perfect chance to uh, mention the paintings on, on yes. our artwork. On the, yes. That's a, that's a Mexican-American Ana Fuentes very, hmm. very good friend of ours. Uh, actually, hmm. when I first started to date with Deborah, Anna was there. So she's been a long time part of our relationship. But she's uh, become a pretty renowned painter. Cool. Um, and so besides the two pieces that we have on the cover, very soon here we'll start to put a lot of her stuff uh, on our website. She's got a lot of oh, beautiful great. things. Oh, great. Awesome. Uh, we'll set now, up something the- so people can make prints. Now, what about a CD? Because I know people can, you know, buy this digitally now and everything, right? But there's a limited edition CD, right, and and digital album, like a limited edition that has um, some of her art in there, right, as well? Or, um, yeah. or well, it has a different cover, and, and we sign it. And I, it's a little kind of a package with other stuff in it. A little, uh, there's kind of a booklet that I wrote that talks yeah. about each song, who was in it. And our feelings about it and how the song manifested. So there are mm. a couple of, there are just some goodies in there. And then we sign it. I just sent one out in fact. Oh, cool. Yeah, but it's it's also available just as a regular C D purchase. You just have to do it through that uh seven D website. Uh oh. until it'll start to show up in stores now. Uh it okay. just was they're just shipping this week. So uh, mm. it's it, out okay. it's out. It, yeah, yeah, it's, like it's Amazon. Out. You can get it on Amazon. Has it now? Just just started maybe and yesterday. And Bandcamp, and Bandcamp, at least yeah, you know Bandcamp, Bandcamp is act- my preferred place. Yeah, uh, Bandcamp's beautiful for musicians. They give us the biggest slice. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, uh, awesome. as you well know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's, here's, here's your quarter of a penny. 
uh, yeah, for yeah. like every well, exactly. back streaming. You know, yeah, I would take a quarter of a penny. It's the, when it's when it's the point zero 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 yeah one yeah. fourth of that. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a little out of Because we all hand. know how poor Amazon is. You poor yeah. babies over there. You're so struggling. I know. Yeah, I know. And they're not well, even the worst defenders. Well, uh, they're hard well, you workers, know, man. I see the Amazon people that come here. I salute them, man. That's a hard yeah. job. Yeah, well, the guys out the there. people the are working. Out there delivering. Well, the thing too is yeah. like Facebook. We have a musician friend who went to put her album up yesterday uh, or two days ago, and and sell her album online, and because it's called Happily Ever After, the algorithm decided not to. It sorry, you're going against community guidelines. I mean Uh-oh. that's that's. What? That's where we're at. And so That's there's no crazy. one to contact. Hey, hey, we got to tell you, know? you one, Nancy, or I got to mm. tell you this. Uh, I don't know if it's Lisa or Nancy, but Deborah can tell you that one of the reviews we got uh, said something about the vote being uh, sexy and slutty. Is that what it said, Deborah? Oh, <laughs> no. What? Something. No, no. What they said was it's, they balanced that beautiful uh, space between sexy and slutty. So they weren't really. Wow. But, <laughs> but for some reason, when the, Amazon that pulled sexy, that quote, that's one of the quotes Amazon pulled. So the things, if you like this, down below. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. oh, my God. A few little sexy and slutty ads. Yeah, it's very funny. Oh, oh my I better God. not talk yeah. about the dog's purple poker around them then. No. <laughs> not with oh. that dog. <laughs> well, we got, I got kicked off of Facebook last year uh, and because I got hacked through another company and they stole my passwords and did whatever they did. And I got kicked off of Facebook. I got kicked off of Instagram personally. And then our business, like I'm only now back on Facebook, like in the hey, last oh month. My or, gosh. And Same I didn't thing. do anything. I got, yep. I got mm-hmm. kicked off Instagram and I don't have the energy to go back and deal with, with all that. But Deborah, just even maybe last week you were kicked off Facebook for something. No, they it's they have an algorithm that goes a little bit wonky once in a while, and yep. and, uh, that's I have to say that we're starting our own group because of that, just because yeah. of that. Cause Cause we have we, our own group. We won't now. kick ourselves off or no. anybody else. It's a group. No, without good it's reason. A, we're doing our own group for all of yeah. our radio guests and our yeah. big blend experts and people we meet on the tour, so they can all connect and communicate. It doesn't go by algorithm. It's by, yeah. It goes by actual conversation, and there's no advertising. It's actual yeah. wow. real, real stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because like, yes, we're tired of that. We're going to have to track that down. I'll, I'll send it to you because it's all by private invitation, so we don't have any people, Weirdos. bad people in there. <laughs> yeah, we don't any. Yeah. No, it's got to be cool. And no bots. No bots, oh, none of that. that it's sounds pure. perfect. It's pure. It's like going to happy hour. It's really fun and cool. <laughs> so, but going back to your album, I love this. What you know, going back and and reimagining these songs. You know, Pat, you were talking about it. You know how King Crimson, like I said, like everybody's been on our show, like musicians, always talking about it. I'm like, dude, I got to check this out. What? Don't forget, I I grew up in Africa, man. So it's a little yeah. <laughs> I may be oh. behind on some things, but not really in regards to a different. Every music is different, right? And People kept talking right. about, oh, you know, King Crimson, King Crimson. I'm like, okay, got to check it out. And so I, I dig it. I dig it all. And Thank you coming so back much. to this country, I'm like, this is some cool stuff. And then listening to this album, I'm like, okay, this is different. I love that there's just that whole flow. And there is, like I said, mystery and magical and, and mystical. It's all Basic. in there, which I love. And uh, the thing, though, going in, Pat, from your perspective, I know Deborah, you you've sung with the band and everything too. Your perspective, going back in and reimagining these songs, how is that? I mean, how is that for you? Is that experience? Does it kind of open your mind to going? I'm going to do like do it again <laughs> and and check out what we can do with the same song. Well, a little bit. I just have to forage for joy, if that makes any sense. I don't always mm-hmm. have concept, you know. Um, as David Lynch put it, sometimes you just have a little fish and you wait for a bigger fish to come along, and then the thing sort of exposes a direction and, and you pursue it. Um, but I, I think you're mistaken that Deborah had not sang in the studio before. I think mm. you just said that she had a lot of experience singing. Um, mm. She has sung all her life, but <laughs> she didn't sing oh. in front of me. 
uh, oh, until I thought a couple she years ago. Oh, I thought she sung with the band uh, on, a, on tour or something. Nope. I read something somewhere about no, that. No, okay. no, no. So I've I'm reading sang something wrong. before, but I haven't sang. I never sang with the band. I sang. I sang with the Madrigal group. Oh, oh. And, oh. And, oh. And, and oh, yeah, cool. and with uh, musical theater. I've never sang with the band. Not rock. It's always for me. It's always been like old standards and uh, jazz. <laughs> so I, I approached this material with that kind of background, old standards and jazz. Yeah. He's not a jazz guy. So he had his basket of tricks and we had access to a lot of really great musicians who played a variety of instruments. So that also was part of how it became what it became is the yeah. addition of the other music musicians with their instruments. Yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah, Lisa, I love there's, that. There's, an, there's an important component to this. I'll try to explain quickly, Lisa, is that uh, Adrian Ballou, Tony Levin, and I were three members of King Crimson, past members, and, and um, we do a camp in the Catskills. It's the Music Masters Camp, mm. which they've been doing with Modesky, Martin Wood, and Alban Brothers, different bands. But the the people that come to the camp obviously are drawn to drawn to the artist's they relate to so we end up with this camp with about a hundred people that are are pretty devout crimson fanatics all brainy and doing this year after year we do a lot of progressive rock jamming we're going to play genesis songs and they'll play zappa songs but at one point tony levin put together a jazz cafe something in the evening to do that was quieter and Deborah has never sung in front of me, really, a little bit in the car, maybe. But here at camp, because I wasn't in the room, she can tell you she jumped on stage and sang. Well, it wasn't even the stage, was it? It was just a cafe. You jumped up to the corner of the room. Oh, maybe <laughs> that's what I read. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's cool. Cool. That's, and that's cool. When, that's uh, cool. That sort of kicked well, this Pat idea was... into high gear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was surprised, needless to say. And so that's what made us start to think. I used to think that the that the world couldn't merge. But then the longer I went on tour with him, yeah, and I started watching them live, and I saw these beautiful songs sung. You know, uh, Jocko is an Irish tenor. And so when he the started singer, singing... The current singer in King Crimson. The current Jacko, singer of Jackson. King Crimson. Yeah, he's an Irish tenor. So you started to see these beautiful romantic moments. And I started mm. thinking, you know... And then Pat, too, when he saw me sing, said, you know... So together, <laughs> it was like, what if we... <laughs> What if we did oh. this? What if we took those songs and turned them into something romantic? Yeah, you know, because this is, I, I told Nancy when I first heard your album, I went and said to her, I was like, this is, is like full of jazz, but it's mm-hmm. not like yes. typical jazz. This has got the, right. it's like, yeah, like Sade and, and like there's these rhythms in exactly. there, but it's not, it's not like hitting you in your voice is doing this. I'm like, oh, you, you've got that. It's kind of this, like, oh, I, I'm going to say more of a, um, South American jazz vibe to it. Like, you know, I guess kind of my immediate thing was that. And then I'm going, but then it's like, you've that mystical quality of what is magical singing. I, I did magical singing once when we had our band before I went full blown with them. I went just you had to see band? what the heck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're both musicians. Oh. <laughs> that Lisa or so, Nancy? Who had the band? Both. Both of us. We were both oh. in the same and band. And we, we used to teach. Yeah, we had a band in San Diego, and we had to, we, we had to go with our magazine <laughs> world because shenanigans, the band, we could write a book of shenanigans because it just it Dude. got a little out of control. <laughs> and we were it was when we started our magazine in 97, we had our band. And all hell mm-hmm. broke loose with our band, and everybody was getting arrested and doing drugs and doing stuff. Yeah, and we're like, like we're, oh my our God. clients are hiring us. We can't be doing this stuff. So we weren't doing the drugs. <laughs> just saying, just saying, we're clean. But yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever yeah. have you ever seen the movie The Commitment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. It. that's right, there. right there. That's exactly and the band what fight happened. At the end, exactly to the T. <laughs> it was exactly brilliant. What on stage but, in our hometown. I know. It was was like, all right, that's it. We're done. We're like, we're but, done. <laughs> but we learned a lot. We learned a lot. But I went down and and it was when we got we lived in South Africa and came over here and we I'd started a band in South Africa. Actually, I was dating a drummer and I took over his band because he couldn't sing. And I said, or okay, drum. you need to drum, but I'm going to sing <laughs> and drum I or sing. Or so talk. <laughs> when we got here, I did the magical thing. I went just to see if I could still read music. And they accepted me, and I'm like, hell no, man, I can't do this. I was put there playing like auto harp and everything, and I couldn't believe yep. I passed through this. And 
But there was this purity that took me back to when we lived in England of singing yeah. in choir, this purity that is beautiful. And you have it like, I know Stevie Nicks kind of gets into that stuff, but she doesn't have that. that it's a different voice. Let's put it that way. Yeah. There's a purity that comes in that I find very fascinating with your voice because you also get into that's the, the flat. There's a flat you know, thing it, yes. That, yes. that's very hard to pull off. And you do. You got oh, the flat. Well, thank you. You know what I mean about that? There's like a flat. I do. Yeah. Yeah. It exalts cool. itself in good timing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, odd timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was all about the odd timing. timing. A lot of musicians we worked with had to stop and go, okay, now what? Oh, I see what you're doing with your timing. Like it mm-hmm. threw them off a little bit because I'm, a, what did Pat say behind the beat? Yeah, 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 but that's like syncopated. Right. It's, it's syncopated. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a, it's that's, syncopated. That's all a that. I'll get word. there when I need to. Don't push me. I'm going to get there when I need to. That's what it is. <laughs> kind of thing. Well, we all yeah. have that tendency to hear the song as we heard it a long time ago. So as soon as the phrasing or the chords are changing, uh, it takes a while to readapt. You know, if you're not the person doing it, you're, you're mm. thinking this person must be making a mistake. Uh, to phrase it like that. But I don't have See, I, that background. I didn't grow up with King Crimson. I didn't listen to them when I was young. I didn't start listening to them really until I started dating Pat. So I don't have that. I call it a handicap that you can't hear it any other way. We were interviewed by a German um, radio station. and He said he had a hard time with um, Heartbeat because he loved the original Heartbeat so much that he had to listen to it four times before he got what we were doing. Hmm. Because, you know, you're going to be in a habit as listening, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, see, the, listen, Billy at Glass Onion, that's how I know. Like, dude, i got to give him a shout out. He's in Asheville. He's over the hill somewhere. But, yeah, <laughs> but, he's great. Uh, where we, yeah, yeah, he's, he's awesome. Hey, you know what I just thought of today? Um, what, what I moved to Austin about 25 years ago from Los Angeles, and I had mm-hmm. made a list of my 10 favorite cities where I was going to move to. And mm-hmm. Asheville was also on that list. And I always say that I picked Austin because it was the, the first one on the list, but I, that means I misspelled, didn't I? <laughs> no, but listen, Asheville, so many people are moving here. You walk the dog in the neighborhood and you drive around, people are moving in and pretty much on top of each other. But it's beautiful yeah, as a visitor. 25 years ago. I was ready to move to Asheville 25 yeah. years ago. I would still I say just, do it because it's so I made awesome. my list of 10 with the wrong spelling. Oh, there it is, Asheville, Austin. But Austin, we're, co- we're going to Austin this in March. We're going to be in Austin for, like, finally to go and hang out and do stuff and take care of dogs and, and stuff. But um, to well, me, if you need these... some tips, hit us up. Call us and we'll tell you where to go. Oh, cool. cool. You never, We've been you know, here forever. We... That's awesome that you're – because Austin, Music City, it is a music city. And, and some of our it was. you know music friends are there. And it's like, this is really – it's cool stuff. But going back to King Crimson, yeah, that's how I got into it. It's like – when we got back to this country, I, I did a gig with a guy who was one of the bass players for the Allman Brothers, like filling in later, David Goldfleet. Uh-huh. I didn't know who the, the Allman Brothers were. I'm, I wasn't <laughs> stupid about music, but I knew a whole bunch of other stuff that people don't know in this country. Like everybody she was, was like, yeah, your boyfriend. <laughs> you know, but so I, I, you know, had to learn about the Allman Brothers and they had a lot of jazz in there. See, they... Now I'm all into them. So King Crimson came in for me now with doing all these interviews. People are talking about King Crimson. I'm like, what the hell is going on with King Crimson? Now I know. I can tell you right now. I have like 10 friends right now. They're going to send me emails like, you know. But you can't know everything. And you learn. And to me, the best thing on the planet is hearing new music. I don't care if it's the first time Uh you've heard Big Mama Thornton. Go do Mm. it. Go listen to anything you can. Yeah, right? Yeah, New we've gone deep the into the Netflix. We've been watching a lot of Netflix, uh, you know, Dylan and, uh, oh. and the, the Clive Davis story is, is really mm. great. Oh, There's yeah, so yeah. Old art, you get old shots of Ray Charles and so many mm. things, man. Uh, but the, that the uh, with the Rolling Thunder Review, man, what a great movie. I never saw that. And it introduced so cool. much other old music. Yeah, it's a really great uh, Dylan uh, it's Martin Scorsese. It's great. Fantastic. That was a cool. That's when he had his white on and and Joan Baez. He's like, <laughs> yeah, well, you you went and fell yeah. in love, but you know we should have done it. You you ruined it. You screwed it up. <laughs> Talk about a Valentine story that went bad. Like 
And the, the two of them, like, I don't know, man. They, I just, yeah, they would have been king and queen of the world together, I think. Yep. I just wish they were, yep. but they um, mm-hmm. they were awesome. But, man, I, I am hoping we're going to play Exiles because I want to play this so bad. Play I love this. Yeah. My favorite yes. song. We're going to close your segment with that because we're going to go to England now and talk about dogs. But before we do that, or maybe it's Scotland. I don't know where uh, she's coming from, but Angela today. But what is your champagne toast? What are you happy about? I know the album, right? But, like, what are you raising your glass or scotch glass to, I should say? Who's first? I'll go You're, first, but it's going to be the same okay. thing. I, I'm just it's happy. It's going to be the that, same you know, thing. Well, really, it's it, it's amazing, and I'm grateful that I got to be home for a year, a year and a half, and actually be with my wife every day, really. And uh, it's not just – I mean, it's the things we can do, the gardening and the cooking and, oh. and, and house cleaning, you know. Uh, that, that's what our I'm house, to to that. Our house in the yeah. middle of Austin. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We, we, we put the parents yeah, table. We, we went through and, and my we toast. organized vinyl records and all yeah. that stuff together. Yeah, my How toast you, is Deb? that I get I got my husband home. Like you think about, he's a professional musician. He's on tour all the time. That means he's yeah. unless I go see him. So it's either we meet up in hotel rooms. That's one of the reasons I loved Two Hands so much. Or I and or I'm backstage watching people fawn over him. So I'm sitting kind of off to the sidelines, and that's the whole. Um, Saturday, book a Saturday feeling. If you flip the pronouns, you can hear that it's spoken from a woman's point of view instead of the other way around, mm-hmm. and it makes sense. So, yeah, I'm toasting the fact that I have my husband home. I've had him home every Very single cool. day. It may never happen again, but it has been magic. I, I'm so, so grateful for it. That's, well, that's awesome, cool. you guys. That's awesome. awesome. And so, yeah, I mean, do you think, what do you see happening now in the, like the next six months or so? Pat, do you think you'll be back on the road or? Unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> I think we will be because uh, I'm getting the emails and I think King Crimson will be touring probably in July in the States, oh. uh, July, or else it'll be August, September. Uh, but that's uh, North America, USA, and Canada. And then we go again, uh, uh, Australia and Japan, and that'll be November, December. In between, I do a, a, a trio project with Tony Levin and Marcus Reuter we call Stickmen. And we've got uh, a European tour in October. If things are healthy, we'll do that in the gap. Um, and I would quickly want to salute uh, your South African roots, um, I was in a band called Mr. Mr. in the 80s, and oh. our co-producer, Paul de Villiers, is a South African, one of my dearest friends. Uh, I feel a strong connection to, to the music of South Africa, having worked oh. with Paul. Cool. Yeah. Oh. yeah. He South was in Africa. four jacks and a jill. <laughs> wow. Mr. Mr. I remember Mr. Mr. Now I'm, hmm. I'm yeah, like, I, hello. Yeah. I, I was playing Dude. romantic music a long time ago. Dude, yeah. that's the one I yeah. pull out when people don't know who King Crimson is. Oh man, Mr. Miss, yeah. You know, it's interesting. Like South Africa really has so amazing cool. musicians. Like I was yeah. saying, laughing about Sugar Man and Rodriguez coming out in oh, this country, mm-hmm. which he's, yeah. awesome. he's from yeah. Chicago, you know, and yep. everything. But mm-hmm. everybody's like, "Have you heard of this guy?" I'm like, "Dude, that was Dude. our Bob Dylan growing <laughs> up in South yeah. Africa." You know, everyone played yeah. called the, the whole album. Everybody knew the words. At the end of the night, everyone that was drinking would be drunk singing Sugar Man <laughs> music, you know. And it was like, yeah. you guys just didn't know. And But watching that documentary made my heart happy that people knew who he was. He was just always this elusive dude. We didn't know what happened or who he was, really, other than he was Rodriguez. And we all That's listened it. and loved his music. You know, we mm-hmm. didn't have the internet back then, and you know it was Africa, man. But Africa, we lived in Kenya too, as that's really where Nancy raised me so was cool. in you know early in Kenya. And I want to say the music Kenya. there, and I think oh, that's, that's so cool. also part of just the rhythms, you know, in the music that you have with this album. There's that. The, huh, you're that, able. I to, did try. I, this I is did gonna, try. I used some. A little bit of Afrikaani drums on uh, on uh, yeah. one time, and we kind of tried to go a little Argentine tango with uh, mm-hmm. uh, like the accordion that's on Inner Garden. So yeah, <gasps> you know, rhythmically the the record did fall a little bit more into world music. Yes, uh, mm. not a li- you know, it's 
vaguely leaning that direction. <laughs> well, I, I like just, that I, because yeah. that's a good introduction to people who are stuck on um, everything. It has to be like guitar, pop bass, and drums. <laughs> and, yeah, marches and pop and or it has you know, to be pop rock and, or and, it has to be blues or it has to be this. Yeah, it's like, it has to I be I love this. albums that that so I like up. the crossover. Like let's what give it, it a twist. Do. And do something yeah. new. I like yeah, that. Yeah, let it be. Let it be what the music wants to be. And I, I love yeah. it because yep. there's your drumming in there. It is interesting to me because that's that. This is going to sound weird. I don't know. I don't quite know how to explain it. But there's the flow. <laughs> then her voice is there tying. Every, to me, your voice, Deborah, is tying everything together. This is just my opinion. Thank you. And, and everyone has one, you know. But it, this is just mine. But there's a song like you, here. You are. Then there's all the music, there's classical moments, like this should be, I would love to see this, like, go full-on orchestra, right? And then, yeah, we have here some, it is. I have to, those are go, beautiful go musicians, it. i got to tell you, Arlie DeRoe and, uh, and, and uh, Colin Gatwood uh, from the Houston Symphony, and uh, just amazing pl- players. They play all over our record, so you yeah, have a very great. good ear. Yeah, they're, they're, cool. you heard the orchestra. Yeah, yeah that's to me is like and it's magical. You probably, because, go ahead. You would never know this, but R. L. Lee's father wrote uh, all the music. Uh, is Schoolhouse Rock. He's uh, cool. You know, from our childhood here in America, he's a hero. Wow, wow. this cool. is so cool. And then, and then huh. let's look at this too. Okay, you've got the voice, you've got the instrumentation, the drumming. It was interesting to me. This is the weird. I don't quite know how to do, but. There, you are able to space out the sound and then bring mm-hmm. it back in. It, does this make sense? It's like a wave goes out. So like, it's like all these different beats are floating, just syncopated enough in the tide. Like if you think of tide mm-hmm. going to the shore, like if you're in the boat and you see the tide go out and the little nets, you know, the fishing nets, and you've got those little boy <laughs> things, the little ball of keys in the net. I want the right? whatever you're drinking. And so each one lands there, but it lands on time, but it's just in that little thing, that pocket. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, now we can come together. It's a very interesting thing what you do with drums and the dynamic of that. It's, because you can, it? It's bending yeah. the rules. I hear yeah. yeah. personally. Bend, and so bend the rules. how... How far can you bend it? Because if you bend it too far, then people just give up on you. But you got to get in there. It's unpleasant. Yeah, you've got to bend it just yeah. enough so it's just so enough. Just enough. They're like, oh, now I feel good again because you brought it back home. So, and then the next time you can bend it even further till you get out the gate. Bend See? it. Bend it. Just a, uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. I'll behave. I'll behave. But like you guys, you thank. Think. You know what? Yeah. It is awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I'm I'm thrilled. It's Valentine's Day. The album is mm-hmm. out, A Romantic Guide to King Crimson. Go check it out. Uh, go to Pat's website. Oh, let's tell everybody to go to 7dmedia.com. The number seven, then D is in D for dog. Cause we're you, dog, can dog do, <laughs> media. you can also do 7D Media, the Mastelados, and it'll pop right up. The Mastelados. And I love that name, Mastelado. Uh-huh. I want to go. I think yeah. you need a pizza. Mastelado pizza. I want, I want oh, you're making me hungry. I know. I'm hungry. <laughs> all right. We're going to close with the song Exiles, and then we're going to talk about pets and travel and all that good stuff. So stay tuned Yay. and take a listen to Exiles. Okay, I love this album. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. You take care. Thank okay, you, ladies. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.
Oh, no. enjoy my 